Needles everywhere. Yeah, by now, you know who Toji is. Togi? One of the two. And you also know the content that they produce. You've at least seen it in the algorithm as you're scrolling through TikTok or Instagram. The kind of content that is like this. <laughs> leaking all over the place. Shane Stouffer, or Toji, is the guy we're gonna talk about today and his rapid accumulation of fame in the scene of fitness and bodybuilding. Specifically, his proud and open attitude towards the use and abuse of anabolic steroids. This kind of uh, sounds familiar, right? Hi guys, this is my Team 3 CC Synthol line. Uh, this is a, uh, a needle that I'm gonna use to inject it with. Just pound it, and you're just gonna start injecting slowly. With the rise of TikTok and generally short form content, we are finding that it's more easy now compared to ever to go viral on a social media platform in the fitness space. Essentially, you have to be young. He's 21 years old at the moment. Generally, you have to hop on steroids after only a few months of training. And you cannot forget to display needles everywhere in your posts online and talk about how awesome Tren is. That's another essential one. I'm finally on Tren Balone. How about that? It's in my body. How excited is that trend togi he's real or show off your acne that's also a really big one right now for some reason but this is the number one for acne right here oh my god no like it's like fucked can i show my hip on youtube can you see how swollen it is <laughs> i fucked my shit pinning last night it hurts so bad to walk but in all seriousness, it's quite obvious that anything controversial is going to reel in quite a bit of attention. Sure, being open with PED use has been something that has been on the internet for a long time now. Forums going back into the early 2000s are still open today that you can view. Steroids are taken uh, eight or nine to ten weeks before a competition. It's not a healthy thing to do, but uh, it, it's being used. Did you, did you take them? I take them. I took them, yeah, up until the competition. And I think most people expect it as kind of the norm of the fitness industry at this point, or at least, you know, with the whole Greg Doucette scene coming about and the Natty or Nots being published every single day, you can rest assured that a lot of people are aware steroids are involved in the fitness influencer era. But just hitting for views, that's kind of new here. I mean, he actually said it himself that he was the originator of this kind of content. The original phase one was just take steroids on the internet, edit it, to some cool music and immediately it went viral the first video i ever posted i think it did like a few million views or whatever damn yeah i was the originator well i remember david texting me he's like your shit is fucking got like your shit's lit anybody that oh. whenever you see the gear edits the people taking steroids and doing a crazy workout <laughs> that was that was me i started that. So, and people hate this that is trend. insane people hate it so people much people fucking hate that trend but bro i hate it <laughs> <laughs> My question that I want to answer here is where did Togi come from and why is he specifically a problem for the fitness industry? Well, from my understanding, which isn't very good, there's one of two stories going on here. There was the arc of basketball and the team he was on, everyone called him a twig, which got him into the gym. Or the teen heartbreak arc, which kind of seems common here, where he went into the gym due to cynicism about women, which honestly, we all did. What was like the first memory you ever had to like get you even considering like lifting oh dude a girl broke my heart and i was like fuck that bitch i'm I, i'm gonna get huge and she's gonna want me back well he started out like most of us on this platform and many others posting meal prep content workouts stuff of this nature you know the the basic stuff the, the actually applicable stuff for most people how the fuck did that turn into this i'm a six foot well, his goal from early on, very explicitly, was to make it big in the fitness industry. And he clearly saw one way forward to do this. And I will admit, his philosophy behind doing this is extremely clever. Hopped on steroids because I wanted to get famous. I remember that was the goal. I was just like studying social media, like how the fuck can I execute this better? And I came to the conclusion that I needed a topic that people that fucking hate it 
will absolutely comment about yeah. it and people that are curious about it. Also a community that's obsessed with it. So that's the trifecta for me is what I determined. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take steroids and I'm going to post videos of me on the internet taking steroids. I cannot dismiss the fact that he has a very good understanding of social media and how to develop a following extremely fast. He has over 600,000 followers on TikTok, 350,000 followers on Instagram, and 230,000 subscribers on YouTube. In just a few months of starting his journey, he has landed a feature on a lot of people's channels. Big names in the fitness industry, Alex Eubank, Larry Wheels, and a lot more. He has a crazy streak of going viral on social media. He seems to post thousands of videos, and out of those thousands, tons of them get millions of views, whether it's short form or long form content. And he even has clippers who clip his live streams and post contents, which they do on his fan pages. And his fan pages also get millions of views. But you know what happens when you make really unhealthy choices and publish them live to garner more views and to stay relevant within the social media platforms that you're currently relevant on? Well, you die like these two. don't hate on them. I realize they're great people in and of their own right, and they have a lot of brilliant things to say, but they were very similar. And for guys like this doing PEDs like it's some sort of porn addiction, as time goes on, you're going to need to do some more fucked up shit to get the same kind of satisfaction as you would when you started. As you can see here, this was Toji Stack just four months ago. New cycle started about a week ago. How about that? And I feel fucking good. We're just doing right now about 400 tests. We're going to slowly work our way up to 800 tests. You heard that right? 800. Bold and known, about one to one to test. So 800 that. Um, and then trend to run in the light. Just a little bit of trend. I'm going to just start off at 100 milligrams and then go up to as much as I can handle, really. Um, so I'm going to go a little bonkers this cycle potentially because it doesn't stop there. It does not stop there. Last um, eight weeks, we're going to be doing Amadrol. 40 megs a day. I think that's what it is. I forget exactly the dose. And then we're also going to smack a little bit of ment. A little bit of ment. M E N T. It's the only steroid that's legal for research purposes. And it's just like Chad testosterone, is my understanding. But testosterone is 10 times as strong. And just literally a month later, this is already his stack. Nine. 100 milligrams of testosterone, 900 milligrams of equipoise, 150 milligrams of ment, six IUs of growth hormone, two times a day, IGF-1, 50 micrograms pre-workout, and it goes on 20 milligrams of oral pre-workout, super draw, oral super draw, 20 milligrams of oral anadrol. These are all highly hepatotoxic drugs that will massively impact organ function. And I love how he has telosartan at 160 milligrams. That's fucking radical. No doctor would prescribe it at that dose. Ligma. Ligma? What you ask? Ligma balls. Those of you who don't know what a telomisartan is or telome, which is what he put here, that is a blood pressure medication. It's an ARB or an angiotensin receptor blockade. It's meant to lower a hormone or block a hormone called angiotensin from a binding to the receptor site and thereby lowering blood pressure. But the effective dose is like 20 to 80 milligrams. 160 is radical. Eight. That's fucked up. So let's just dismiss the fact that he can't even run a proper cycle before changing plans and completely skyrocketing his doses through the roof. This is by no means a small cycle. This is heavy for even some really high level competitors in bodybuilding. And I'm talking about guys who are 250, 280 pounds lean. And, and trust me, the thing is, is that this kid wants anything but to be a professional bodybuilder. It seems his interest is just to be on a social media tangent all the time. You know, I, apparently I'm a bodybuilder because I don't know what else to call it. But I'm just a dude at the end of the day. A dude that likes to get jacked. I take steroids because it's nice to be 230 lean. Helps you make more money. Helps you get more bitches. That's the only reason I do it. So why is he pushing all this gear? And again, for those of you who aren't aware, your means, PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, or steroids more globally. Well, for one, he himself says his life is basically about being a degenerate. Used to be big, like, you know, king of gear talk and the whole glorification of steroids. I've been there. I've done <laughs> That. I'm not going to try and pretend I didn't do it for a little bit. I've I've eased up on that, but since then we've transitioned more into um really just my whole life is all about being a degenerate. Like, <laughs> Degenerate as it gets. Which is a pretty depressing life trajectory, if you ask me. Personally, that doesn't sound so awesome to embrace. But we're also just at the tip of the iceberg here. You see, Toji isn't alone. He has developed a whole crew of people who follow his same social media posting strategies. And no, I'm not talking about his coach that he doesn't even listen to in the first place. I'm talking about what I'm going to call the research chemical trio. Toji, Dave Rue, I don't know if this is how you pronounce, again, notoriously very bad at pronouncing names here, so don't hate me. And Nate 
Udi. For context here, Research Chem is a website that was produced to sell peptides in different forms of PEDs legally under the disclosure that it is a research chemical only meant for mice. And the only reason that these men are affiliated, I, I said men, I should say boys. You're a boy in a man's world. The only reason that these boys are affiliated with this company is because it's the safest way to profit from selling performance enhancing drugs technically legally as a really great area, which I think somebody should look at, to be honest, on the DEA or FBI, whatever. But obviously, these guys themselves are openly dabbling with much more than just a few peptides on their website. So why is this group of gear junkies in specific controversial, you might ask? Well, it's because their social media presence isn't just any longer about PEDs specifically. It's also now about gambling, having weekend long benders, and doing tons of cocaine. I mean, these thumbnails are hectic as fuck. And then I'm literally going to pin 200 milligrams of trend, 300 milligrams of test, 200 milligrams of Mastron, and 300 milligrams of DHB, and then I'm going to start pounding drinks and doing schneep. So that's the plan for today. I don't know why this younger generation seems to get completely off on people ruining their lives. It's kind of interesting, actually, that ruining someone's life seems to get a large exposure on social media, but it is what it is. These three are genuinely speed running to the end of their life as fast as humanly possible. Originally, they all moved together in Miami, which uh, is a very typical plot with these kind of homies, with the intention of building their brand and businesses all together until, well, they get kicked out from their property manager. Okay. What up? Yo, we have a property manager here. We got some serious issues going on. We need you. I've seen some videos online. I've seen videos of you slamming on the laptop and the floor, throwing chairs. I want to be here. I know I don't want to have an issue. Okay? Yeah. I didn't sign up to babysit you guys. Like, you're adults. You should be responsible. What happened to the TV? The TV, yeah, it got fucked. I'll buy a new one. Did you punch it or what? No, no. We, we were just moving a bunch of shit around and something got knocked into it and it got messed up. He then goes on to say that there was two specific reasons that he was evicted. And you didn't say anything about my gift, you bitch, you greedy bitch. Plinko, I have to play Plinko. But dude, I think you're gonna have a really hard time when you're posting online, smashing and throwing around chairs on the property and damaging the property itself, as well as snorting illegal drugs on the property itself to convince anyone that this was uh, anything outside of your own negligence of just human existence. Even Nate can admit when Toji showed up, it all started to go downhill. The first week in San Diego went pretty well. You know, I was bodybuild, I was train, I was eat. And then my good old pal Toji G decided to show up and let me tell you when he moved in that is when things started to go downhill look to me this guy's like a toxic ex because even in this new video he talks about how he invited happily toji to his new crib and made a whole video we got a new crib after literally claiming that he wanted to kill him i mean i wanted to kill him when he just like kept clicking the plinko balls he'd never let me do it oh Udi's bad luck Udi's bad luck which is unfair i just get grouped in with a fucking degenerate retard just because I was in a couple streams, you know? And so this is where it's landed me. The next day. What up, what up? So, big news, we got a new crib. We're no longer homeless. No yeah, yeah. I locked it in. Um, say what's up to the people and D-Ball Jacob. And to no one's surprise, you know what happened? Well, Toji lost their house again. Yeah, I would have personally seen this coming a long time ago. Basically, we have a problem, right? If you watched my last video, you saw that we got a new house in Palm Springs. It wasn't free. I'm the one that got it. No one has paid me rent money. And I'm currently on vacation, but after watching Shane's last video, it's pretty fucking obvious that the dude just blew all of his money. <laughs> I'm starting to think that living with this guy is not such a great idea. So yeah, basically my roommate is broke. I am now broke because I paid for our rent and we have rent coming up next month as well. So basically that's the problem that we're gonna have to solve because we know Shane's gonna keep fucking wasting his money on Plinko balls. And this guy's gambling addiction is absolutely no joke. 
We're rinsing hard, huh? Bang! 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 Holy fucking! Holy fucking! Bang! bang. There it is! That's 20 hours! That's 20 hours! Bang! 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 Holy fuck! Holy fuck! Holy fuck! Bang! Bang! bang. That's, that's fucking... Holy shit! I just broke my whole setup. I just broke my whole setup. He's literally as bad as a drug addict putting all of his possessions on layaway so that he can buy more fucking cocaine except in this instance he's selling his car to gamble more money here's the problem i'm, not, I'm out of money what i'm gonna do to solve my financial problems is i think i'm just gonna go ahead and uh sell my car and put it on black I don't want to predict the future here and i don't even need to because he's doing it for me i i, I plan on going broke probably three more times before I like figure my shit out. It's not hard to see here that even though he seems like a very funny and charismatic guy, he's also not somebody you can keep around your inner circle and someone you could rely on or depend on in any capacity. And look, I, I get why this guy went viral. I really do. I understand it, but it doesn't mean it's good. And just to make someone famous through bad things is arguably just as bad as encouraging strippers to strip or drug dealers to deal. It's, it's a bad situation situation altogether it's like the scene in a movie where everyone sort of is in this dystopian reality and someone's dying and they all just take out their phones to record you're watching someone literally live their life in a capacity that is going to end itself it's a closed loop circle that you're seeing at a live moment and it seems now like the fitness industry because of toji has become this scene where it's no longer about becoming your best self but to me it's essentially you either abuse drugs to get views or the whole overdone science-based lifter skill it, which like a 90 pound female talks about anabolic steroids for men online which is just blows my mind or anything exercise science related shit it doesn't matter but when it comes to peds sure we can see that it's becoming a one-way ticket to fame on most social media platforms but it also seems like we forget the thousands of people who have died using peds and specifically the ones who did so on social media publicly talking about it and how great it was we're now six feet under boston lloyd rich piana these kind of individuals are dead all because they literally didn't know how to to put the needle down with people begging them and i honestly do believe thoroughly that toji is going to end up in the same exact boat along with his friends if this behavior doesn't really chill out and i know it's hard for him because he's literally he's battling like a million different addictions gambling drugs steroids all at once but this is like literally the type of person who probably needs to be deplatformed for a little bit to seek help and stop really influxing his income and keep in mind this guy is 21 years old and his audience is likely within an age range that's much younger and I would say if you're going to make these choices, you have to stratify your audience and realize if you're talking to a younger group of people, you need to have a moral obligation to talk about things in a responsible manner so that this younger demographic doesn't get influenced by you. Because nowadays, those fucking parents just put an iPad in front of their child and hope that it gives them enough obligatory education that they don't have to worry about it. This truly does influence younger individuals to do things that are extremely horrible for their health and don't just have a mediocre effect on their health but lifelong huge impacts to their health, especially in a cognitive sense when your cerebral cortex isn't done developing and you start taking huge influxes of androgens, it's not a good a situation. And as much as he says and claims like his intention was not to influence people to do drugs, his actions beg to differ. You influence them to not take steroids? Yeah, probably about five to 20 DMs a day saying, thank you so much, Tuggy, you inspired me to take steroids. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude. Oh God. Ooh. What? Like, <laughs> I, that was not the intention of what I did there. And I wish I could find the clip. I really wish I could find the clip, but I just couldn't find it anywhere. But there's a clip of him saying specifically that he thinks everyone should do at least one cycle. Definitely said, I think every person out there should run one cycle in their life just to try it. You know, maybe if you fucking have a heart attack and die, that's my bad. I didn't say it. But for the most part, new experiences are trying new things are really important to me. And steroids are something that can potentially benefit your life so much. I think everyone should try it which as a steroid user and abuser myself is not something I would ever recommend to anyone. It literally should not be on anyone's bucket list unless you truly medically need TRT or testosterone replacement therapy. And what's shocking is his following is still trending upwards to this day. But I am convinced that we're just watching this kid's precipitous decline into a deep, deep, dark hole. Or right, wait, no. We're calling this video golf and... 
we're calling this video fucking what the fuck was I just talking about that's actually a great segue to the next thing we're going to talk about is Anabar <sighs> what are you talking about and the reality of the situation is behind closed doors and with the cameras off, there's no way that he's finding humor in what he's doing and how he's living his life. It gets clicks, but when you're destroying your future, according to him, ruining your relationships, and ultimately setting yourself up for failure and just throwing the world a disheveled resume of all of your public distress that you've been putting out on the internet for years now, you're gonna have miserable moments in your life and you get to live those moments alone. Here's the problem. I'm not getting a job anywhere. I post videos of me taking openly using drugs on the internet to in front of millions of people for an extended period of time. I don't have a college degree. I am uneducated and a public drug user. It's not looking good. I cannot put this more simply other than to say it's just an addiction and it's pretty fucking disgusting. He's repetitively said that he's going to quit gambling just to once again lapse in that behavior and do it again the next day and stream it, which could just be a attention seeking tactic. But come on, this isn't healthy at all. But as much of an idiot as this guy is, I know it would still shatter the fitness industry if he did die because everyone's in la la land thinking that what he's doing is fine and he's just living his best life. FYI, if this is how you believe someone should be living in their 20s, you definitely need some help too. This lifestyle is not remotely safe for anyone. I've said it many times about Boston Lloyd on this channel and how his kidneys failed and his heart literally exploded and he continued to ignore it and run PEDs. But the only thing that will save this kid now is if something extreme happens as a wake up call. And hopefully he takes it as a wake up call. But if you're watching this video, what I most hope that you take away is this is not the behavior a 20 something year old should be following. And if you are a 20 something year old, don't idolize PEDs. They're not going to make your life great. And I've talked about it on this channel before, but there is a huge survivorship bias on the internet. You see people who are successful and take steroids. People like The Rock, people like Toji, people like Nick Walker, and their side effects are relatively minimal and they don't really express any issues. But there's a ton more people, way more than them, that have experienced horrible side effects, life altering side effects mental health issues, acne that stays permanent and cystic and develops scars all over their face and back, horrible issues with complacency in their own life after starting steroids, it is a problem. You see a very small selection of people who've had a successful time running steroids, but to be honest, there is an even larger, a much larger selection of people who have ran steroids and paid an extremely large price for what they've done. And I run steroids. I'm not saying that they're the worst thing in the world, and by all means, I actually think think they should be legalized. But what I am saying is that similar to how THC can be legalized, we need to have things that consider age, when and where is the best time for someone to use something like this if they are going to use it and not publicizing how to abuse it. I think that is a really big clarification that Toji needs to decipher. Again, stratifying who your audience is and approaching them in a different moral capacity is really important. And he's stuck in the loop now to which a point he can't really escape what he has become and he has to face it no matter how he moves forward. But if you like the video, do subscribe down below, comment what your thoughts are on this kind of scene we're seeing come up in the fitness industry. And we do have a Discord group, which you can join. It is a paid Discord group, but it does support this channel and allows me to produce more videos and high quality videos at that for you specifically. Have a beautiful day.